Good, Good morning. morning. So today we're gonna both try and get our second dose. Today we're gonna find these vaccines for me and Emily, different kinds. So we slept outside of this mall here. <laughs> Let me show you. That's where the vaccine is, right there. We're in good standing to get Pfizer here. Pfizer, yeah, they have Pfizer here. Hey. So it's a nice, how'd it go, huh? Great. So they basically just said, is this your first dose or second dose to six so after that she walks up to me and just asks me my name. Six of us vaccinated so quickly. And then I just had to wait 15 minutes to make sure I didn't have any reactions. They told us where I can get the AstraZeneca today. So we're gonna take another 30 minute drive over to a different mall, Andy's Mall. Wow, just like that, I am vaccinated completely. Thank you, Panama. Might as well get some food here in this mall. I got an arepa. Yeah, I'm all vaccinated now. Yay! Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. Had an arepa in there. Nice. I had yeah. a PB&J in here. Yeah, there's a, a temple up here. It's like a non-denominational spiritual temple that they only place in specific locations around the world where they say there's good energy. So I don't know, it's up on a hill. It might be a nice cool breeze at least. So I'll probably go see what's up there. Oh, Grammy, are you guarding my coffee? Thank you so much for guarding my coffee, my boy. So this is a pretty sweet little road here heading up to the Baha'i Temple. The road had no name at the bottom, but it was a really cool gate. And it's feeling like a bit of an adventure. We're about to come up here with an epic view for sure. Honestly, I'm not religious, so hopefully they're cool with us just checking it out. See what's what it's like up here. Something different that you don't see every day. Uh, this is definitely not something that we do often, but it's pretty cool. I guess it's like there's one God and it's all the same God, but you know, it's the God from Christianity, Muslim, and yeah, all the same. So it's just trying to make a really good community with uh, knowing that there's a higher power. Yeah, I guess trying to unite all the religions instead of having them all bomb each other all the time. Oh. Um, I'm a little bit biased when it comes to religion, but Wow, this is really beautiful up on a hill here. Um, something really interesting to check out. And they say, don't speak too loudly and we can have a bit of a meditate in here and a, a bit of a think on life and oh. hopefully feel some good energies. Well, it's really got the location down up here. Well, you're not allowed to take footage inside, but on the roof, there's a star like this one with nine sides and then each line is a arc that goes all the way around the roof. So in the top center, there's that star and some lines that go all around. It's a really beautiful building, really beautiful location here. Nice breeze in there for sure too, because every side is open. So as soon as you walk in, you just feel like a gust of wind. It feels like air conditioning, but... <laughs> and. Yeah. The director said I can fly the drone, so let's send it up. While we were packing up to leave, um, some Baha'i followers came over and started chatting with us. They showed me pictures of all the different temples they went to. So there's nine doors on the temple, and that's um, symbolizes the nine different religions and they did recognize that there's definitely more than nine religions but the basic nine religions and then other religions span from them is because of the nine doors the nine points on the star and there's also nine temples also the main doorway uh he told me points toward israel because that's where the prophet Baha'i was from whose idea was to try to unite all these religions instead of have them fighting so often, which I think is a beautiful idea. We walked into the temple, I just felt like a very great breeze. That was, it was pretty nice. Yeah, the people were super nice. It was a really wholesome experience. The 
so we rolled up to this spot last night and this guy is sitting here. He is a British guy who is super, super nice. Insane amounts of stories because he's been on the road for three years in this big old guy. But I think we're gonna stay here again. It's a nice spot just right next to the Radisson. I know Snow and Kurt stayed here and he has met Snow and Kurt too. So Sombrita has been loving it because there's not really any garbage. So she's able to just run around like a crazy dog. Yeah, we're right next to the water. Beautiful looking out, nice little breeze. It There is no shade, so it is quite hot. The only other thing is there is no shower and it's so hot that it was pretty sweaty last night. So we're gonna have to go and find a shower today. This spot is also really nice because it has a security guard all the time. So that's really cool. But we're gonna head off for the day and we have some things that we want to do. Hey, so we sent the money in to get the van shipped over to Colombia. That was kind of crazy because we didn't know if we could take out that much money at one time. $1,325 to ship the van. And fortunately, we have that Charles Schwab debit card because that makes no international fees. Even if the ATM charges you, they refund that money. And we had to do six different withdrawals because the maximum you can withdraw here is 250. So now we're trying to figure out all the animal stuff. So we're gonna go get the pets, at least the start of their paperwork. That has to be done regardless. Yeah. And as far as where we're gonna stay after we drop off the van, which will be pretty crazy not to have the van. Yeah. Um, we think we found this hostel that's pretty good price, good area. It's the Bodhi Hostel. It said online that it it should be between $25 and $31 a night for a private room, which would be perfect because the Airbnbs, after all the crazy uh, fees, would be about $50 a night. Yeah, so we're really excited to be shipping, but all the things got to be done. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting this stuff done slowly but surely. For the next steps of shipping, I got to clean the van. Tomorrow morning, we have an inspection where mostly they just check the VIN number and the engine number. So most important is I go under the hood and clean off the engine a little bit where those numbers are and hope that I wrote down the right number when we entered Panama. <laughs> Keep checking off these steps to get us to Colombia. Probably the biggest unknown right now is if we really need to completely empty this propane tank. So it's gonna help if I make a coffee and some ramen. Check this out up here on Ancon Hill. There's a ton of these sort of large rodents here, the gutis. Well, you guys, I got my bike running smooth and we are heading to a little birthday barbecue for a BMXer here in Panama City. Well, super grateful that the locals invited me to the little BMX sesh today. But I got some extra bike parts that I've been holding on to for countries now. <laughs> I think I'll try to see if anybody wants some of those parts. Grab a couple beers. And I haven't rode the skate park before either, so it should be pretty sweet. Wow, so we're about to buy our plane ticket. Here we go to Colombia. Is it going to work? Oh my God. Oh my God, it's not working. If it doesn't work. We, we, we have to stay here. We can't. Hey! Yeah! Woo! Woo We're going to Colombia! Let's go, buddies! Woohoo! Vamos a Colombia! So we decided to travel on the Thursday. We're going to drop the van off in the container Wednesday at the port, and then the next morning early fly to Colombia before the boat even leaves, which is a little bit risky. Woo! But you can't fly with pets on the weekend, and this is the cheapest of Thursday, Friday, Monday, so. Might as well. <laughs> Our container buddy is gonna be here until um, until Monday anyway, so. Yeah, we figured out how to get the dog with us. We're gonna have to pay like 100 extra for that. The cat mm -hmm. will be 125 additional, and our flights are about 500, so it's really ridiculous because it's like a super short it's distance. It's only an hour. They just built a road. Come on, guys. So yeah, it all adds up to uh, pretty significant in the end, but including the costs in Colombia, including all the accommodations and everything, then we have a whole continent to explore. Yeah. 
if Ecuador will please open its borders within six months or else we'll be stuck in Colombia. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> here we are chilling at the inspection. We just had our container buddy in here for some coffee. We made fresh in the van <laughs> for the other nomad and had a nice chat. Oh, but now nice everybody's time. just waiting with the hood popped for the inspection process. And we're gonna have a little brekkie in here. I asked the guy, hey, is there anywhere around here for breakfast? And he's like, no, it's dangerous to leave this building. <laughs> I did read that it was dangerous, but so yeah. I don't think it. I mean, it's it's like six. It's like seven o'clock in the morning. I doubt that anything crazy would go on right now, but maybe. But yeah, the van's all clean, and we got the paperwork we need. Just got to wait on the process. Thank you just approved us. Over there, it was basically just inspecting the VIN number, and. I was a little bit worried because I basically had to find the motor number when we entered Panama and write it down. And I had to like Google like, oh, which is the number and stuff. And so I was a little worried that he would decide that a different number was the number. But fortunately, when it came to that point, I was there to say, here it is, you know, and show him which number I had already written down. So yeah, basically everything was super easy, super quick. The, the inspector, I mean, he was like, short like like i wouldn't say he was rude though he was uh, just getting a job done yeah yeah he was efficient you know and uh, so it was fine everything went well it's nice that we got to have like two coffees in the van so now i'm like ready to go for today it's good because we have a lot of stuff to do today <laughs> picking up paperwork so this paperwork should be done around 2 30 and we'll head back near that area to get it oh one other thing is that a lot of other people whenever they brought their van they parked out underneath the bridge but our 159 wheel vet base promaster fit inside the gate so and we were the second ones to get or maybe the third ones to get checked so yeah we were there at 6 30 and we were the third people to get checked at 8 20. so yeah off to a good start okay well we just went to the vet and we got the animal health certificate. Yeah. So we weren't sure we'd be able to do this step today, so we're super stoked. Okay, so we paid for the pets to be exported at the bank. So now we're just gonna take our receipt over to the um, Adwana type building, the customs building for dogs. We're wearing pants again, because this is a government office and everyone's wearing pants. <laughs> So we went over and finished the pet paperwork. Graham is in Danny's name and Sombrita is in my name so that we both can bring a pet. <laughs> We're going to pick up one more paper so we can fly with Sombrita. And then after that, we have to pick up the inspection complete checkoff. So we're basically just picking up four different papers today, running all over the city. It's been... It's been good. I think that we're getting a lot more done than I thought we would, honestly. It's great. Yeah, two down. Oh man, I'm the last person here. They messed up the VIN number, so he's gonna fix that. In the meanwhile, check out the trophies. Hey, babe. How'd it go? We got the paper. Yes, good job, babe. Yeah, it took longer. They had the VIN number wrong. So we corrected it. We got the right, good thing I checked. <laughs> oh my gosh. Who had the VIN number wrong? Them. Oh my god. We got it. <laughs> Grammy, how were you in the hostel room? He didn't want to go. <laughs> Vamos. Right before we're putting on our van in a container, we thought we would check out the canal to see how these boats are in person. It is $10 for foreigners to check out Miraflores Locks. Uh, 
Some differences with during the pandemic is everyone has to make an appointment before heading to the locks. We weren't able to spend a lot of time in the museum and cloth masks are not permitted, but they gave us some surgical ones. All the time spent at the canal is limited to prevent overcrowding. Nonetheless, heading to the canal is time well spent. We, we definitely recommend it on a trip to Panama City. Here we are at the bottom now, and you can really see this boat's ripping forward from this perspective, being held by this little train. And it's gonna go down there, and that now that lock is above the level of the ocean. So it'll do the same process in the next lock. Very cool to see in person, especially since tomorrow we're putting our van in one of those containers. Yeah, Mike? Wow, can't wait. I mean, it's not gonna go here, but the containers are cool to see today. Yeah. That guy's going on a little roller coaster ride. Ours are like these longer ones. The shorties are something else, I guess. <laughs> yeah, you can't fit our van in those. You gotta use the long one because it's taller. Oh, it's the high. Oh yeah, it is. It's taller. Are you like Tika por vida? I got my Pura Vida uniform on. <laughs> Those good vibes. That was super epic watching the shipping industry under the belly, the guts of the shipping industry. <laughs> because while we're up there, we got more information from our shipping agent. So we got to print out this bill of lading they sent while we were up there. And later today, we're going to take off the solar panels so our van will fit in one of those containers tomorrow. Tomorrow! Whoa. I can't believe we're shipping tomorrow. It's been not too long time coming, but it feels like we've been chatting about it, chatting about it. How are you guys going to get to Colombia? Can you go across the canal? Yes, we can go across the canal. No, we cannot go across the Darien Cap. <laughs> <laughs> The Darien Gap is the problem, but we have found a solution, hopefully. <laughs> Danny's gonna take the solar panels off of the roof and then we're gonna put them on the bed. The thing I'm gonna do while Danny's doing that is clean out the fridge, because obviously we're gonna have to unplug the fridge. It's gonna be a weird time. The van is gonna be hatless. Yeah, but we're shipping, we're putting the van in the container tomorrow. So, ooh, so exciting, so much work, so much stress, but I'm excited. I undid the two screws in each corner to take off the roof rack. We've unconnected the electrical under there, flip the solar panels off down there. So now hopefully we can lay them down over here on top of the roof, slide them down. We did this once in Mexico, so. Oh, this man without a hat. Oh. <laughs> <It's> kind of sad. <laughs> Ooh, we did it. Yeah, good job. That was a little bit of doing, like just. You don't want to drop it. Yes, yes. Don't drop it. So now we're just going to clean it off, throw it in the van. I think it's good. Yeah. You can bungee it back in here, the corner's really good. Yeah. Wow, so you can see the fans up there are still the highest thing. Emily's closing the back one. The front ones, we're pretty sure the front one's gotta come off. But hopefully, not the back one. Well, behind the scenes here, we got the solar panels out surfboard and this is the last time I'll get to hang out in our home for a week we'll be traveling with two pets <laughs> <A> week <laughs> living in a airplane 
<laughs> I won't have my bike for a week since it's gonna be in the van in the container, so I might as well go hit the skate park one last time. That'll be the last time I hit that skate park. Pretty crazy. Pretty excited to head to Columbia. Seems like every other person I meet from Columbia and they're all telling me how great it is. Get the van back to that hill right behind it. So the hostel is, get packed up. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs>